everyone, Jacqueline Howard here. All around the world, sophisticated supercomputers are crunching huge amounts of data to create climate models or simulations that help us understand how our world is changing. Now this data includes global temperatures, extreme weather events, rainfall, sea levels, and even wind patterns. Sounds crazy cool, right? But there remains some doubt around one critical component, clouds. And because of this, some people question the very validity of climate models. As a 2012 article in the New York Times puts it, clouds' effect on climate change is last bastion for dissenters. So, what does that mean? What do mainstream scientists say about clouds and the role they play in climate change? Can we harness clouds to save the planet? For answers, I reached out to the prominent climate expert, Dr. Greg Holland. He's a senior scientist at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado. So the really important thing about clouds is, is understanding this very fine interaction between the warming part and the cooling part and how that may actually impact future climate. Right now, the scientific consensus is that the warming, in other words, the net effect of the redistribution of water vapour and the re-radiation of heat back down to the surface dominates. And unfortunately, that's bad news because if that is true, that accelerates global change rather than uh, helping us mitigate it. Did you get that? Clouds both heat and cool our planet. That's why some say it's difficult to predict cloud behavior and the net effects they have on our global climate. But a recent report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, hints at a more certain relationship between clouds and our climate. The current consensus on this for the IPCC is that uh, the clouds are in the net warming. Not real sure. Uh, there is a possibility that the, uh, the other effects are dominating and they could be cooling. So this is one of those areas that we need to know a lot more. The cooling component is what fuels some of the criticism current climate models receive. See, low-level thick clouds, like stratus clouds, keep us cool by reflecting solar radiation. Or they may absorb heat emitted from our planet's surface and then radiate that heat out into space. But high thin clouds, like cirrus clouds, primarily keep us warm by absorbing heat emitted from our planet's surface and then re-radiating that heat back down to us. Another way clouds may warm our planet is by distributing water vapor. Now that last one is a critical one because water vapor is the biggest greenhouse gas we have. It's about 70 to 80 percent of all of the greenhouse warming on the earth is due to water vapor. What if we actually controlled cloud behavior to mitigate global climate change ourselves? Think about it. If low-level clouds cool the planet, what if we artificially whip some up to keep human-induced warming in check? There are actually very good scientific studies that have looked at this uh, using complex uh, computer models and, uh, and some fairly advanced theory. If we can increase the size of that bank of cloud, then we can cool the locality, but also we can increase it enough, and the models have shown this and the theory has shown this, we could increase it enough to be able to have a net cooling effect on the world at large. So there's uh, one possibility where we could, what is called geoengineer the climate, uh, using clouds to our advantage. Clouds for the win. But geoengineering can be risky business. For instance, one proposal is to amp up production of these cooling clouds by what's called cloud brightening. Now that's when you blast salty mist into the air to speed up formation of water droplets in clouds. But do you think we should be looking up at clouds to combat human-induced climate change here on Earth? Let me know in the comments. Leave your thoughts in the cloud. Talk nerdy to me.